Upon a life I have not lived Upon a death I did not die Another's life, another's death I stake my whole eternity So on Friday the 8th of January, we find ourselves in the epiphany season, the revelation season, the God has revealed himself season. It's that season in the church where we remind ourselves that God hasn't hidden himself. He's not hiding himself. He is revealing himself to us. And so Psalm 19, let me begin with just a few verses. The heavens declare it, the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. There is nothing hidden from its heat. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So let me just stop right there. So what the psalmist does, inspired by the Holy Spirit to do it, is he takes the, the expanse of the heavens in creation and uses that to remind us that God is over us, that God is above us, that God is like the sun in the sky who runs his course with joy. He isn't challenged. His sovereignty is never suspect. He's never in a place where he's out of control. Indeed, everything on the surface of the earth is under the effect of the sun, under the effect of God. God is re reveals himself from the heavens through words. And everything is subject to him. Everything is under him. And so when we when we look at the created sky, it's actually designed to inspire us to remember that we are under God's authority, under God's watch care, under God's shepherding. That's, that's the imagery given here. And then we're told that the skies above reveal the glory of God. Now, the Hebrew word is, is extremely complex. Uh, glory refers to uh, brilliance, shining, but not just that, also weightiness, heaviness. All these things put together, uh, we, we might conclude that maybe a good way or one of the ways we can get to the heart of what does it mean, the glory of God, is the importance, the, vita the vitalness of God how vital God is to all things. And that's a weighty thing, a heavy thing, and yet a brilliant and shiny thing. The heavens declare the glory of God. The, that is the sovereignty of God over all things declares his glory. And so what's our right response? Fear of the Lord. That's the right thing to do. And what does fear of the Lord mean in a biblical sense? Well, it means to be humbly conscientious that we are under God, that God is present with us. Let me say that again. To be conscious of God's presence in a humble way is the fear of the Lord. And another way of saying that is to be intentional about recognizing God's presence in our life. Let me say that again. To be intentional about being conscious that God is actually seeing our life and overwatching our life and shepherding our life. That is the fear of the Lord. 
So in this season of Epiphany, we become aware. We do it on purpose. We're aware of the glory of God, the vitalness of God for our whole lives. Amen.